Welcome to your pranayama lesson or breath control or breath retention. Today we're going to cover the exercises in the pranayama section in the manual or as aligned in the online course that you're taking at this time. In pranayama is an exercise in yogic techniques which is working with our breath and breath control or breath retention. When we're working with pranayama, it's often used as a meditation or as the object to concentrate upon the breath itself. Pranayama brings prana or energy into the body and helps us to release apana or waste. When we breathe in, we're inhaling the life force or the prana of the universe, and when we exhale, we're exhaling apana. In yoga, yogic techniques, there are multiple different pranayama techniques that help us to add intention into our reasoning for breathing, and they help us to remove energies or add energies in different ways or to balance the elements of our body in different ways, depending on what breathing technique we're using at the time. Pranayama is also one of the pathways or one of the stepping stones on the ladder of the eight-limbed path of uh, the yogic path of the Ashtanga, path by Patanjali, written in the Yoga Sutras. It's number four of uh, the Yoga Sutras, and practicing pranayama helps us to co connect into the divine and to find our route to samadhi through learning the breath techniques and integrating them into our asana or into our postures. So today we'll work through a few pranayama techniques that are both yogic techniques as well as some that have been developed in my energy healing course, the Divine Light Energy Healing course, which are elemental breathing techniques connected to more of the shamani shamanistic breathing or sham shamanic breathing techniques, but they are all pranayama from different areas in the world. So we always start by finding a space and setting a space for ourselves and finding a long, tall spine, a comfortable seat, finding an inhale into the spine, and rolling the shoulders up to the ears and rolling them back and down along the spine, finding that length in the body and perhaps pulling the flesh of the seat back so that you're sitting more on the seat bones and you grow tall. Tucking the belly button in and working with Uddiyana Bandha, a slight engagement of the belly lock. And perhaps even seeing or connecting to Mula Bandha, pulling up the pelvic floor or root lock and seeing how these locks feel as you Begin just to bring awareness to your breath as however it is at this moment. Pranayama really only serves us if we first connect into the awareness of our breath itself. So finding your natural breathing and your natural rhythm of breathing is actually one of the better supports to moving through your pranayama with ease, which is also the purpose. Pranayama helps us to find sukha, or a space of ease and relaxation, within a space of stira, or a space of exertion and strengthening. So we activate the bandhas, Uddiyana Bandha or Mula Bandha, to feel into lifting the pelvic floor and activating the muscles of the perineum, or pumping in the belly and pulling the belly button to the spine, helping us to lengthen the spine, and giving us more space in which to connect to our breath to fill the diaphragm, as well as to lengthen the spine and open the chest, keeping the shoulders away from the ears, lengthening the neck, giving more space to breathe, and a very slight engagement of Jalandhara Bandha bringing the throat lock down towards the chest, but very slight to make sure the neck is long, but still keeping the throat fully open. When practicing pranayama, it can be useful to also visualize prana or energy or light moving through the body. And when working with energy working techniques, it is good to see yourself growing roots from the base of your body, to take a moment to focus and let yourself ground into yourself and ground into your space, to ground in to the nature if you're sitting in nature or to ground into your personal meditation space or your home in this moment and see yourself growing those roots like a tree surrounding you into the earth and connecting you into Mother Earth. And see yourself opening the crown chakra, the top of the head, just above the top of the head with a thousand petals of the lotus flower opening up to receiving the light of the divine, of the creator, of the Atman Brahman, the super soul, or of your own personal higher self and higher power 
your own personal God or divine force, bringing white light into the top of the head as you begin to take an inhale through the nose and an exhale through the mouth. Just beginning to bring more awareness to the breath and creating a comfortable rhythm with the breath, connecting into your natural breathing as we start to work with slow, deep breathing, which is a balancing breath. Slow, deep breathing is the first in the pranayama section. And as we move through this exercise, maintaining our comfortable seat, our tall spine, our shoulders away from the ears, we will be learning to balance the breath on the inhale and on the exhale and to fill the body with as much breath or as much prana, chi, or life force as we can. So taking a deep inhale and a big ha ah, breath, a releasing sigh, cleansing the body, letting go of toxins. And just beginning to count or start to even your breath in some way using both the inhale and the exhale to make your body feel like you're moving through an even inhale wave and an even exhale wave. It can be useful to count one, two, three, four, hold for a second, and then exhale one, two, three, four. But some have a greater amount of time they can breathe in their lung capacity already and some have less. So to tell people to do their best to inhale slowly filling the belly and exhale slowly releasing all of the air in the body is what can be one of the easier cues to follow so that one can balance and regulate the breath themselves. But the main purpose of slow deep breathing is to calm the body, to fill with energy, to fill with prana and to find balance between the inhale and the exhale to bring in an even amount of prana and to release an even amount of apana, to fill with energy and to release waste, all in an even flow, to balance the space of ease or sukha and to use our strength and concentration to access our stira and to bring this breath into our practice can help us to hold our balance longer, to hold our posture longer, to deepen our stretching depending on the posture. So breathing deeply, Inhale slowly, pause for one moment, and exhale slowly. Focusing the breath down into the belly or into the diaphragm as if you're filling the belly like a balloon, accessing abdominal breathing or diaphragmatic breathing as is known in some techniques, and filling the belly, inhaling, maintaining the long spine, and slowly exhaling pulling the, the belly button into the spine, releasing all the air. And for yourself, either in your head or you can count for your students if you feel, and you can also lengthen the breath, counting one, two, three, four on the inhale, and then exhaling one, two, three, four, and if people seem to have more capacity in the breath and in the lungs, then you can add to the count, count up to five on both, but keeping five count and five count, inhale five, exhale five, inhale six, exhale six, always reminding to find a space of relaxation and ease with the breath, filling with as much air, energy, prana as possible, and releasing as much apana waste as possible pulling the Uddiyana Bandha into the belly at the end of the breath. Next, we'll move on to our Ujjayi breath or ocean breathing, Ujjayi Pranayama. The slow deep breathing is the foundation of the Ujjayi Pranayama and either one is useful to also visualize white light moving up the spinal column or the shashumna, the central channel, central nadi or energy channel in the body. And in this visualization, you are bringing energy to regenerate or rejuvenate the spine and to also connect into the kundalini. And this energy rises up the body in the flow of the breath. 
So beginning with the principle of the slow, deep breathing, guiding the breath in an even manner on an even inhale and an even exhale, the ujjayi pranayama or ujjayi breathing is an additional step to this breathing to begin to cultivate prana in the throat. This energy is cultivated by finding a sound within the throat, which is a slight constriction in the throat, similar to the sound that takes place if you breathe onto a glass or a CD or a mirror, <sighs> fogging it up like you would draw on it as a kid or something, and feeling into <sighs> that slight constriction in the back of the throat, almost like an H sound, but continuous on both the inhale and the exhale. Filling the belly on the inhale, creating that audible sound like ocean waves to follow the ujjayi pranayama or the ocean breathing technique on an inhale and exhale. Continuing the principle of the slow deep breathing, inhaling evenly as you exhale evenly. And there can be a pause or a hold in between the inhale and the exhale if this is desired or if you feel that it is beneficial to you or your students at the time. The ocean breathing technique is also to help us in our exertion postures or in a vinyasa flow because it helps us to regulate the heart rate and can actually cool the overall temperature of the body when you're hot and can regulate the temperature of the body to warmth when you're beginning cold. So it's a good breath to begin as a warm up to use all throughout a practice or to use as a cool down because it's using that even inhale, even exhale and creating the slight constriction of energy and prana in the throat, making a little ball of ocean energy of prana to fill that space in the throat and to also fill the chest, the heart, and expand the lung capacity. So taking a deep inhale, another big ha, releasing, finding that constriction in the back of the throat, a very slight sealing of the throat, Trying with the mouth open once or twice. And then closing the mouth. Inhaling with ocean waves. Exhaling the waste with the ocean waves. This breath can also be done as an exercise on its own just for the sake of relaxation or calming and with a visualization of seeing the self floating on the ocean or sitting near the ocean or is useful to connect to the energy of the ocean when in meditation at the beach or at the side of the ocean and to invite the release of emotion as the waves of the energy come through with an even inhale, even exhale and that slight constriction in the back of the throat. So taking a deep inhale again and just releasing, sinking in, reminding yourself to find that tall, comfortable seat, inhaling the shoulders up, exhaling, rolling them down. The ujjayi breath or the slow, deep breathing are both uh, foundational breathing techniques that help us to balance the breath, balance the body, and lead us into the more, uh, more intense or more advanced pranayamas. We've already been working with a cleansing inhale and a cleansing exhale by taking a deep, slow inhale, filling up with as much air as possible, and then taking a big ha ah, breath out to release the energy, release the waste. And in taking a cleansing inhale, it's important to remember that comfortable seat and those roots growing from the base of the body and that light coming in with the breath. So as you inhale deeply, you're seeing the white light and you can either breathe through the nose with your ocean breathing ujjayi pranayama or you can breathe just a deep slow inhale filling the belly as much as you can filling with as much air as you can and imagining that air that energy as light as white light gold light as prana filling the whole belly filling the whole diaphragm and then taking a big <sighs> relaxing releasing 
And you can take these inhales and exhales, slow inhaling and releasing with a big, <sighs> really letting go of the energy, really letting go of whatever it is you might have to let go. And to step this up even further, you can envision as the white light is coming into the body that you're lifting up any old black yucky stuff, any smoke or, or smog or sludge or fog in the body, in the lungs, in the intestines, any toxins, whatever you would see that as. And as the white light comes in, filling all those spaces, it pushes out all that darkness, anything that you may be holding on to from karmas or samskaras or from your own conditioning or behaviors in this life that make it hard for us to be aware of our breath on the daily. That if we find this energy, this work of breathing deeply, filling with life force and always releasing what we no longer need, then we don't get as much energy stuck in the body and we don't get as much tension or stress build up in the body, whether physically or emotionally. So you can also envision all that negative energy moving out of the body, lifting out like little balls of energy, little little puffs of smoke, little balls of of, uh, of sludge or swampiness just draining out as you breathe. And to even add to this bigger, other than the ha or the ha releasing sigh, you can also work with lion's breath which is a technique from the Hatha Yoga and from the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And it's a deep detoxification breathing. It takes away energy from the digestive system and helps us to access the movement in the abdominals and to also massage the organs. And it's just like the ha breath with starting with a deep inhale, filling the body with that light. But the lion's breath contains sticking out the tongue, opening the eyes wide and looking up and out the third eye. So you take a deep inhale. <sighs> stick out the tongue, open the eyes wide, breathe everything out. So the lion's breath is also done in lion's posture, which will be covered in your posture breakdown section. And it can be done in seated, in lotus, in half lotus, or in any posture really, whether it's standing, whether it's a back bend, you can integrate these breathing techniques into all of your, all of your sequencing essentially. It is good to have people brace themselves for lion's breath and pull the shoulders back and down even more to really open the heart by placing the hands face down on the knees. So taking a deep inhale and opening the heart looking up. And you get a deeper breath in through the body and a deeper detoxification. So just taking a moment to integrate the first few breathing techniques. Slow, deep breathing, inhaling an even slow inhale. Exhaling an even slow exhale. Whether through the nose or through the mouth, through the nose on the inhale or through the mouth on the exhale or through the nose and through the nose, that is up to you and or your students. And you can find a count, you can fill the belly, fill the diaphragm and release all the air, pulling the belly button into the spine at the end of the breath. Or your ujjayi breathing with your slight constriction in the back of the throat and breathing in with an audible sound like ocean waves and exhaling with that same sound. Still filling the belly, still keeping a long, tall spine, and making the breath even on the inhale and on the exhale. Finding your cleansing inhale, filling the body with white light, with prana, as much air, as much energy, as much life force as possible, and you're releasing sigh with a ha. <sighs> and then our lion's breath, deep inhale, filling with all that light. Sticking the tongue out, eyes wide, looking up, pulling the heart forward. <sighs> now we'll move into some of the elemental breathing techniques for a few that are more aligned with the shamanic breathing techniques, and then we'll close with a couple more of the yogic exercises. So always remembering the foundations of keeping the body grounded and rooted through the seat and with that long tall spine, shoulders away from the ears and the light coming into the crown, into the top of the head. 
And finding a deep, slow inhale, we'll be working with our breath of the wind, which is an elemental breathing technique from my energy healing course, the Divine Light Energy Healing Course, or shamanic healing courses that we also work with. And this technique is really for breathing away the old or stagnant energy in the body and comes from working with the energies of the elements. So envisioning a windy day or feeling into the wind itself or the air around you, feeling into the flow of the air wherever you are at this moment. And envisioning trees moving with wind within them and through the leaves and listening for that sound of a whistling wind on a stormy day. And you're going to form a small or to medium-sized circle with the mouth, almost like whistling, but a little bit wider. And with that, you can inhale both through that space or you can inhale through the nose and exhale through the circular mouth. This is similar to a cooling breath technique, which is also what it does for the body. You inhale in the breath and energy, and then you're exhaling the stagnancy away, which does relax and cool the body because of this circular shape with the mouth. So it also helps to envision the white light or light blue and silver light as you breathe with this energy or the power of the wind. So taking another deep inhale, forming a circular mouth. and lightly whistling that wind elemental. And just taking a, t a couple of deep breaths and just allowing yourself to settle with that air energy coming through, coming past. And working through your body, filling you with more energy, purifying your body, connecting you to the power of the wind, of the air. Our next breath is breath of the waters. This is similar to our Ujjayi Pranayama, our ocean breathing, but ends even more exaggerated with the sound of the wave. You're still breathing in with the same slight constriction in the back of the throat as the Ujjayi Pranayama or ocean breathing, as if you're cleaning glasses, a mirror, fogging up a window. But with the inhale. And then as you exhale, you'll make actually the sound. Creating a shh as if you're telling somebody to be quiet but almost smiling at the end of the sound. And envisioning these watery energies or colors of blue or turquoise, rivers, lakes, oceans, envisioning these feminine waves of energy to cleanse the emotion in your body or in the room. Envisioning the moonlight and the sounds of ocean waves inviting the washing away of the old and the replenishment and regeneration of the cells creating space for a clear and clean body, mind and soul and to start building on the highest potential of the body, mind and soul. So working first with the inhale just like the Ujjayi breath and on the exhale, washing the waves. With such a beautiful day, we should integrate the breath of the sun. Hopefully you're having a beautiful day, whoever's watching right now. Even though this isn't live. <laughs> Breath of the sun is another breath that we work with that is connected to the element itself of the sun and to the elements of fire. With this breath, we're also working with a slight constriction in the back of the throat, but it's, it's kind of different. It's almost like the sound you would make when you're coughing something up, where the back of the throat is coming more round than it is closed from the tongue up to the roof of the mouth. It's more closed from the sides of the throat inward so the shape of the mouth is also round and you're almost like you're going to 
<laughs> clear your throat, <clears throat> or cough something out. And this is going to take, again, another really big inhale, really filling the core. And you're seeing the core, or the manipura, the solar plexus, filling with that energy, opening up the belly, really filling the energy of the fire of the sun into the stomach. And inviting the fiery masculine energies of Shiva, of the Agni, of the sun itself, to clear away fears, the old, to clear away doubts, insecurities, and anything else hiding within the solar plexus or within Manipura. Envisioning yellow and gold and red to melt away the chains that bind the true light of your soul. So when you fill that belly, inhaling with the sunlight, and when you breathe out, creating a sound like a fire breathing dragon or like a wood stove or like the sound of a train engine burning. Imagining that you have the power of the center of the sun burning inside of your belly, burning away all that is not serving. So breath of Gaia or breath of the earth is our next breathing technique that is one of the shamanic breathing techniques connected to the element of the earth. When working with these elemental breathing techniques, it's kind of like we're moving through each of the balance of the elements and then the final to sort of ground us back into our bodies, ground us back into ourselves, is the breath of the earth. So it helps to envision the nature itself, natural phenomena, the green shades of light, or seeing nature, seeing trees, your favorite place in nature, and envisioning Mother Earth herself, or your, your form of Mother Earth. And that this breath is also with the principles of the ujjayi breathing and the slow deep breathing where you want your inhale and your exhale to be fairly even. And you begin with the breath of the ocean or the ujjayi breathing with the slight constriction in the back of the throat. But when you breathe out, the mouth is more widely open, almost like a smile. making the exhale long and slow release, really focusing on the intention in the body of embodying the energy of the Divine Mother or embodying the energy of Mother Earth and feeling into the compassion of the heart. This breath is really most effective when we do focus on the intention itself of transmitting or connecting into the flow of Mother Earth and bringing that energy forward into your body, into the class, into your space, or into working with your client or student in a private session. Really focusing on the intention to ground everything back in, seeing your roots, growing those roots from the base of your body down into the earth. And that white light down through the top of the head. Breath of Fire is our last exercise today, which is a breathing technique that's often used in Kundalini Yoga, but can also apply anywhere in your life that you feel you need to release stress, release emotion, release fear, and build up some warmth or heat or determination in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. This is a really good practice for detoxification and for aiding digestion, although should not be practiced directly after eating or with a full stomach or full belly of either food or liquid. This uh, breathing technique is also a good visualization for healing the solar plexus, for filling the core with light, with energy, and for sustaining the heat in the body, whether it's through a vinyasa practice, a hatha practice, or a kundalini, it can be useful all throughout. This is not to be practiced just before shavasana or just before sleeping. An easy way to explain this breathing technique is to pant like a dog, sticking the tongue out and pumping the belly, making that <laughs> sound like a dog panting, really, and feeling how the, belly pan how the belly pumps naturally, perhaps guiding your students or trying this yourself at this moment, placing your hands on your belly, sticking the tongue out and panting like a dog, <laughs> and feeling that natural pumping of the belly. You're le leaving the shoulders back and down on the spine where they are. You're not, not moving the shoulders as you breathe. You're not moving too much else of the upper body. You're just pumping the belly in and out. So it's pulling the belly button in and releasing it. 
and there is an inhale and an exhale which are intentional, which you're purposely inhaling, purposely exhaling, which differs this exercise from Kapalabhati. But still, after some time of doing the belly pumping, the breath kind of does become automatic. Always inhaling first, keeping that long spine, rolling the shoulders back and down, filling the belly with, with air, with prana, and then pumping, and then closing the mouth and continuing that action of pumping the belly. In kundalini yoga, it is often recommended to look up and out the third eye while practicing this breathing technique. However, in other forms of yoga, it is not necessary to guide your students to do that. So this was Breath of Fire. Which can be done as an independent exercise or as part of a sequence inside of almost any posture that you're wanting to build more heat inside of your practice. Even in a plank, in a standing posture, in a seated meditation, and just to take a transition, if you're practicing this on the back or, on, or as leading down to your cool down, to make sure there's a transition point of some twists or something more cooling, more calming before actually going into Shavasana, because this breath energizes the body and energizes the brain and makes it less simple or less than easy to relax into the Shavasana. Thank you for coming to Pranayama today. This is Eli <laughs> signing off. <laughs>